fresh coffee in the cool morning air, a whole bunch of tiny campers, and the mountains of East Tennessee. What could that all possibly have in common? Well, this is the third annual DIY Teardrop Campers Community Spring Gathering. So I ran into a guy named Jay Poor, who happens to be the creator of the DIY Teardrop Campers community. Um, so tell me real quick how this whole thing came about. What, the group or? Yeah, the group. Yeah. I worked at a dealership and uh, one came in for service. And uh -huh. next thing you know, I walk out and look at it. I'd never even heard or seen a Teardrop Camper in my entire life until that happened. He came in for service. It was a home built too. Okay. It was built out of a guy in Toledo built it. And he had a water leak. Came in. That was the first time I've seen it. So now I got my my curi curiosity's peaked, and I'm so I, I says I'm gonna go look. You know, I worked at a dealership. My dealership didn't sell teardrops, but one of the local ones did. So I went over to there, seen it, and one I seen with all the options I wanted was seventeen thousand dollars. Oh my gosh! Needless to say. That's when the light bulb came on. There you I go. Was like, there you go. I think I could build one for cheaper. So there you go. That's 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 how it all started. So now you've got the Facebook group, and how many members is it up to? I think it's seventy four hundred now. That's a pretty big Facebook group, especially for something as niche as um, as a teardrop camper. So that's pretty good. So listen, this group is a fantastic group. Um, a lot of folks on there helping new builders, sharing ideas. If you haven't checked it out, and if you're wanting to build your own teardrop camper. Go to Facebook and check out the DIY Teardrop Campers community. Jay, appreciate you, buddy. Hey, not a problem. So how long did it take you to build this? I tell people it took nine years to think about it and a year to build it. There you go. <laughs> One thing that I really like about this camper is you can just walk right over to it and sit down and go to bed. Uh, mine is a little tall and I have to climb up on a stool, but this is so nice and convenient. I love these. Uh, oh, also. check it out. <laughs> this is laminated? Yeah, so I build cedar strip kayaks and canoes and wow. I use the same technique where you make form and you lay the cedar strips on there and then you epoxy and fiberglass them. So. <laughs> There is a saying from Tolkien that says, not all who wander are lost. Yep, I've heard that. And um, so I like that wanderer uh -huh. name. The deluxe was to make it kind of vintage-y. There you go, and adding there a you go. On the end. I love the font. That looks yeah, really nice. That is a beautiful font. or something like that. You did a nice job. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Kent, it's good to meet you. You have a beautiful camper, and uh, thanks for showing it to me. All right, thank you. Nice all meeting right, take you. Take care. So not only do we have a lot of teardrop camper builders that are here, we also have prospective teardrop builders. Here's a nice couple that have drove in just to look at the campers to get ideas for their own build. So what's your all's names? Uh, mine is Jose. Wendy. So Jose and Wendy, I'm sure glad you stopped by and I hope you build your own camper. Oh, we are looking yes. forward to do that, yes. We'll be following the, your build for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's beautiful and I've been following the page on Facebook for about maybe two years oh you're gonna build one you're gonna build <laughs> one so we've got a teardrop camper that's been getting just like a flurry of activity people wanting to come through and take tours of it it's got some really cool features i gotta let you check this one out so introduce yourself to us hello my name is Ru. Ru. my name is yumi Ru and yumi and i'm kane kane I'm well it's good to meet you all <laughs> you have a beautiful teardrop would you mind showing it to us no. All right, let's see it. All right. So, this is the front, and I uh, got a removable tongue. That kind of became an accident, but that's a pretty good uh, security. Oh, very good security. Yeah, I just needed to shorten my tongue so I can store in the garage, but, like, you know, that's pretty good security. And this is the uh, AC uh, storage plus the tongue storage. You know, AC was, uh, you know, re you know that oh, wasn't yeah. 
basic minimum requirement for my wife. Otherwise, she wouldn't <laughs> come to camping. I understand. And but uh, you know, I can remove this during the winter, and I can store it in the garage, and then you know that becomes extra space uh, from the inside. Perfect. And uh, you said, uh, you know, tongue tongue stories. You know, that's where all the cables and you know hose and stuff like okay. that I'll stay, store. And sometimes I, you know, mount the uh, bike rack, and it just kind of slides in that tongue tube there and uh, I'll carry all the bikes with me here's the uh, inside of our teardrop when it's all cleaned up uh, I don't have all the sleeping bags and stuff laying everywhere so this is probably a little bit easier to see uh, this is the bunk bed version uh, this thing is pulled out and deployed for uh, so I guess this is more bedroom mode Hey gang, and he sleeps on the bunk, and I have a daughter that sleeps in the middle, and me on the on the green side, and my wife sleeps on the other side. And uh, stay tuned for the living room version. So here it is, the uh, dining room version. The uh, underfloor storage becomes the uh, footwell when you're seated. We typically have adults sitting on this side. It's a little bit easier to get in and out. And I have kids sit over here on the back side. So most people are using a teardrop uh, with two adults. So we're looking at two adults and two children. So you got four people in here. Mm -hmm. So your use of having that bunk in there, then that's super clever. Well, thank you. Eventually, you know, this is still an ongoing project, but I'll have a cover here. It'll flip out and then that'll help, you know, little one climb up into uh, the camper and then also, you know, give a, a nice shelf for the shoes and stuff. This here, since uh, my camper, my wall goes bypass the frame uh -huh. and it extends wow, down. That's what is this back here? Is that a... I ended up with the uh, yeah, extra kind of space in the back here. <laughs> so I have a four inch PVC pipe that goes all the way across the um, yeah, camper. Really? I got a, another, you know, hatch cover on the other side so I can store, you know, fishing pole or you know, tarp. Yeah. All right, now whenever he is talking about this thing, he's got a little bit of grin on his face. He's tried to be modest, but he knows this camper is super cool. You've got some really clever features in here. Yeah. Look at that, look at that grin. You can see it. Can That's see the, it. Uh, the galley, the stove, everything pulls down, and you know, everything stored back in there. Additional storage. And down there, that's where we keep all the Dutch oven, some some okay. of the heavy stuff. Yeah, that's pretty good. And here is the another story. That's where the power station is. And you can kind of see there's I got a cubby for the battery. I don't have it yet, but I'll get that eventually. And then you're running the sink on the other that's, side. That's that's a sink. Well, it was a sink. It's just a collaps collapsible bucket right now and Sweet. I'll just put a board over it and it becomes additional storage and you know those are I was kind of skeptical first you know how strong would it be but you know when it's you can pull oh. it up and you know I hinge I put a hinge on the top so when it's open you know it kind of somewhat becomes additional so where do you get a spring like that it's Order it Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It comes in very different length size. Well, that's a good idea. So listen, man, I'm gonna have to give you points on some of the coolest ideas. Look at he's got he's got that grid again. He, <laughs> he knows he's got a cool camper. Um, but there's listen, this thing's been drawing a lot of activity, and there's a good reason why some of the features that he's incorporated. These are things that I just wouldn't have thought of. Probably most people wouldn't have. Man, you really went over the top on this. I appreciate you giving us the tour. Hey, um, how long did it take you to build it? it? Took me about a year and a year and a half. A year and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
All working right. on weekends and nights. I don't want to get him in trouble, so I'm not going to ask him how much it costs. <laughs> but hey, this is a super nice build, man. I appreciate you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And who have we got here? Vince. Vince? And Pam. And from, from Albany, Kentucky. So they're getting ready to start their own build. So good luck to you all on that. All right, I've got a really cool guy. He's probably one of the nicest guys I've ever met, Ben Meyer. Um, he's here with his DIY camper, and he brought this map that shows uh, where the different folks uh, rolled in from. You can see that, the, I mean, the whole eastern United States just about is represented on this event. Pretty cool. So, Ben, uh, where exactly are you from? Uh, just south of St. Louis, okay. DeSoto, Missouri. All right. Now, he has one of the coolest campers on the whole thing, and you'll see I why in a minute. That. I want you to give just a little bit of walk through. Now, you, I'm not even going to tell you what's cool about it. I'll let you figure that out for yourself. I think that'll speak for itself. All right. Well, uh, the technical part, 35 pound, 3,500 pound axle, uh, all my electrical up here in the tongue box, uh, which a DIY group has helped me put in because uh, couldn't have done it without them. Yep. Uh, it's, it's worked out great, holds everything. Uh, it's amazing when I built this how things fell into place because I didn't know what I was doing and, and guessing everything but uh, I get lucky with stuff like everything fits in its proper place and holds on. Uh, old bike rack that I salvaged and turned in there. Threw together a little makeshift awning. Uh, cut off parts of an old fire truck and ended up getting my hatch board and such. The trunk here goes all the way through, holds all my awnings, my chairs, uh, anything that goes on the outside goes in there uh, when we set up camp. Uh, had the idea of afraid to build a hatch and uh, no resources to get things because I didn't know where to resource some stuff. So I uh, had a vision of uh, using our old Jeep, which has been in the family, and uh, utilize that for my hatch and salvage some parts from the pop-up. Got my sink in there. Uh, 11 gallon tank underneath to make it look like a gas tank. The table pulls out, we got our little stove. And, uh, one burner, it's only two of us usually. Uh, works out just great. The backsplash here catches all kinds of attention that, cool. that really, wouldn't believe how many people think it's real, but it's just stick on Lowe's self adhesive wallpaper that uh, turned, worked out surprisingly well for us. And uh, added another trunk space over here for my propane bottles and such. Once again, my neighbor let me come over and cut up his fire truck. There you go. And uh, utilize more materials. Uh, spare tire, which I put on a, uh, I mounted, bought a, a separate hub and put it on, mounted a separate spindle on here so that I could change hubs rather than bearings on the highway. And, uh, so it's, it's get me off the highway if something goes wrong. Gas cylinder and uh, all my windows are recycled from a used RV. All right, so man, this is super cool. A family heirloom Jeep went down through several generations. They just hated to get rid of it. So you found a way to incorporate your build so it lives on. This is like super cool. I never would have thought to do this, but yeah, you're right. You got the package. You got the tail lights, the license plate, locks, and everything he needed all in one. So the family Jeep lives on. It does, Jeep he goes. Appreciate that tour, Ben. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. All right, so we've got Melody Miller, and she is packing goodie bags to every single person that's camping here this weekend. Can you tell us a little bit about what's in these bags? Um, well, when we were discussing about doing the goodie bags, Jay was like, oh, I'll just get some plastic bags or whatever. So I, just, I said, well, I'm in the process of making book sleeves. And so I was like, I'll just make some book sleeves. Sweet. So, so these are the nicest goodie bags you're ever going to see. And then so um, I do resin projects too. So when I had a little bit of extra resin, I made keychains out of them. And Neat. 
and then you and a few other guys donated stickers, so, and we have each yeah. So what we'll do is we'll spread one of these goodie bags out here in a little bit and show you what I was in there. But Melody, thank you very much. We appreciate you. You're very welcome. All right. Thank you.